Hello everyone, welcome to the NPTEL course on Remote Sensing and GIS for Rural Development. This is week 11, lecture 5. In this week, we have been looking at synergized mapping using crowdsourcing data, along with remote sensing and GIS platforms to check the data and update the data. Uh, more on rural infrastructure mapping, etc. we have seen. We have also noted that using buffer as a tool helps a lot in making sure that we have an area of coverage and creating more infrastructure that is needed for hamlets and villages. As promised, we will be looking at in this week, we've already seen um, OSM use in this week with remote sensing and GIS. Of the attributes, uh, we will be looking at uh, crops and water bodies uh, in this uh, today's lecture. Okay. Crops is very important because as we have seen in LULC mapping, uh, we need to go there and find data for ground truthing. However, if we do not have that data, uh, then you use unsupervised classification. So to use supervised classification, this OSM tool can come very handy and you can also go and put in your data and request. So let us get into today's uh, lecture on mapping of crops and water bodies, uh, but also I would like to add uh, a school layer if possible. Um, and here we are, I will be sharing my screen. So let me first share the school that I've added. Uh, we noted that uh, this is my profile, I've, I have this profile, uh, and I have added the uh, school uh, ETRI, Government Higher Secondary School. You would have noticed that uh, in Google Earth, that school was not uh, captured prominently, and OSM does not have it. So initially, this layer was not there, and I've added that layer. So I've added all these layers here, and now uh, with due course of time, in OSM, it will start reflecting as a school. So these parcels have been identified um, and you can anyone can you start using the OSM free of cost and actually add, um, uh, you can see here just a minute ago, I have added the school. So here is where you could add the school, export the data if, if you need, um, and then also look at other uh, regions that you would like to use. So if you look here, I have added this uh, plot uh, and it does go through a checking and then it gets updated. So anyone who wants to uh, use it, uh, you can actually go through multiple layers uh, and then say you want to edit, add, add um, a layer and then you can start mapping it. So for example, if you just start clicking, clicking, you can add the layer. So here you can see, this is the layer that I've added in OSM. Uh, for the ETRI school, uh, you could edit this if needed for a, a different um, attribute. Uh, I have added this and you can edit. Only features I created, I can edit, uh, not the other features. So for example, this has changed name or some of the data of it has changed. Uh, we can go here definitely and uh, edit it. Okay, so I can, I can edit it from um, the type that we have. Right, so you can click it and here you have the type. I can add the address, the grades. Grades is the class numbers, uh, zero to six. Initially, as I said, when my father was studying, it was zero to nine. Uh, and then uh, now it has become full zero to 12. Uh, zero means one, actually one to 12. Uh, so you can find that one to 10 was also there and then it gets standardly updated. There's no zero uh, because LKG uh, kindergarten is not available in villages. Uh, you can see it's a still a village. Uh, a lot of land is under agriculture. Um, and I'd be happy uh, to showcase that all of this land is in agriculture. Very, very small village. Um, um, and then this part of the village has increased. So like this, I would like you to map your own villages and just think about how much data can be put on an open source uh, if a lot of people participate. The Mapathon idea is also part like this. Uh, we invite you to participate. Okay, so uh, I've added this, so now it will be reflected in the OSM database. Uh, and I am now going to go to our slides again. 
Okay. Uh, and uh, we are going to open our QGIS uh, screen so that we'll be now doing, as the slide indicates, we'll be doing crops and water bodies. Let me share the first screen. Okay. So before that, I would like to show some exercises that I have run out of curiosity. Um, I ran a, a, a Maharashtra state a healthcare uh, system and OSM and look at the coverage. Look at how many points are there uh, beautifully covering all the all places, all the locations. You could see that more hospitals are in the Mumbai uh, region, uh, the urban regions of Pune uh, and other things are there. There's a big gap. So this is the gap we need to address. Either it's a data gap or there is no health facilities. So think about uh, having people travel so far. Uh, let's say how far it is. Okay, let's say if, um, if for example, if there is no hospitals in this region, then people would have to travel, uh, let's say kilometers, uh, and then here. So 50 kilometers in between, there's no hospitals, right? So that's a lot. Think about uh, villages where uh, snake bites is still common, uh, uh, insect bites, lead, fever, all these are very, very common. So in this whole parcel, you do not have uh, any uh, hospitals, which is a big concern. Either, as I said, either there is no data uh, that the hospital is there, not on OSM, so it has to be populated, or uh, it is it is um, not there. So we can quickly check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'll open uh, this layer and first let me see what, what district that is. So let me add the district layer. Okay. So um, when we add the district layer, we will be finding uh, more of um, the uh, districts that are in this picture. Um, but as I said, let me first export this into our Google Earth. Okay, I'm going to bring my Google Earth. Pro here. Oops. Okay, so Google Earth Pro is now here. And first, we have to zoom out to Maharashtra before we input the data inside. So, this is the Maharashtra region. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to go near and see which region. Um, Ahmednagar is really not having much uh, hospitals as per this location. Uh, but uh, if you would like to see that more of, uh, so this region would be very, very underrepresented with the number of hospitals. I'm going to remove the places, um, roads, I remove the roads. So this region, Jana uh, and uh, Silod, region have very, very less um, hospitals, which we will be uh, seeing pretty soon when we uh, download this. So I'm just going to keep it at zoomed at this angle. <coughs> so because when I'm going to open my uh, Maharashtra healthcare shape file, what happens is it will ask, there's so many points, we cannot do it. It has more than 2000 final features. Uh, it cannot be populated. Uh, do you want to import sample, which means only 2,500 of the first uh, uh, the first 2,000 final features will be taken, uh, and then subsequent subsequent. So there's more than 2,000 final; it has to stop. Okay, or you can restrict to my view. So as I said, I don't care about Mumbai side uh, hospital locations because those will be more accurately located. Uh, all the Uber, Ola, everything is being mapping that location. Zomato, Swiggy, uh, Uber, uh, Ola, everything has because there needs transportation. But if you go to villages, there's no transportation. There is no Ola car there, right? So what we're going to see is we're going to first say restrict view. If I say import all, it will take a lot of time. Uh, I'm just going to restrict to this view the, uh, the features. It says 2000 features were imported. I'm say okay. Do you want the style of the features to be ingested? I'll say no. I just want the buttons, uh, whatever default size is okay. And as I said, we are going to do a reset print and this location. So this location has very, very limited uh, number of hospitals. Okay. So Ambad to uh, to uh, Parthur, uh, there's very, very uh, less number of hospitals. And if you zoom in, you will definitely see either uh, uh, locations of houses, all these are agricultural land, right? 
you can see a lot of agricultural land uh, and you can see there is a dairy and stores there's a small village kind of a thing. There's no hospital. There's no hospital located as per the um, uh, OSM data set. Um, but for sure, there's no hospital here in terms of number of houses and stuff. But if you can search for it and map it, then you are creating better access to rural health and stuff. So it starts like this. If there's no uh, mapping of hospitals, if there's no um, proper mapping done, then how do you know how much people are being catered to this hospital? Uh, and especially during COVID, how many vaccines to be transported? If we don't know the location, we don't know the distance. Uh, we don't know how many people are around it. For example, there is a um, hospital here or a, or a primary health care center, PHC, we call them. Uh, and there are around 30, 40 houses that depend on it. So this is what is needed. Uh, the houses look big, uh, so maybe it is a progressive area, uh, but still it needs uh, a healthcare center, a doctor somewhere nearby. Okay, so these are smaller. These are, uh, again, kind of bigger villages, but if you go here, you'll have uh, very, very small uh, houses, number of houses. Uh, and there's a hotel, I think it's a small re restaurant, not a place to stay, uh, and the distance is also long. Okay. So this is where we could get some help uh, from the, uh, let me just go to double click. So we can see the uh, all the points here and only part of the points have been uh, uh, added because it is actually taking um, uh, the view, it's restricting, restricting to the view um, and then you can go to the properties to understand uh, where the location is as i said if you can move now so for example the the, the data is here but it is accidentally be placed there like in the schools and other database you can move it and then and then this can be used as a updated shape file in your gis for making uh, connections for making um, uh, raster out of it interpolations and also most importantly for making access maps vulnerability maps risk maps which are very, very important for um, the rural entities. You will not see the name injected because we said we don't want the style to be injected, but I'll do that uh, also for this location just as a case study. So when you say escape, uh, it just goes out. It doesn't uh, bother uh, putting down the equation. I'm just going to remove this for now, delete contents, and then let's uh, let's zoom in and then re-add the layer but only the particular layer we want to re-add and do you, do you want to reload the file and lose any edits you've made yes i'll say i want only the restrict view and i want the i say okay thousand yes i want the ingested styles so that this this fields can come you can say okay uh, and then do you want to uh, store it uh, i don't want to store it i don't want to save it we can just say okay so now we have all these uh, files. Uh, again, the same um, uh, files are there. You can change the colors, styles, everything here. Uh, some part of it, not all. Um, and then uh, sometimes the names also don't get populated uh, if it is not there. So now if you click the properties, all the names have been ingested. Uh, and as I said, uh, it is um, given the name Jaina district and you can see that it is in the Jaina district. So let's see uh, how the hospital is located. This also looks like a village, a small village with a uh, very, very small coverage. Uh, and then let's see what it is. It is a health center uh, and health subcenter, so subcenter deviating one, uh, which is good. So we now can map it. So just to showcase that um, you also have roads and labels in um, uh, Google uh, Earth Pro, right? But these are more like roads based on uh, the color of the image so automatically uh, you could see that they are extracting because why i am saying this is there is no name there's no name for the road and the road cuts through so but the road goes here so all these are very important to give access uh, but more importantly the hospital is missing so there is a positive uh, in using osm plus google earth pro remote sensing data plus your gis uh, data so for example this is the hospital but it is placed here you all you have to do is go to properties it just clicks uh, the name is already there in the properties you just move it here and say okay and now if i click again you will see all the data but now in a moved building 
okay because i have moved it from here to there so uh you can just move it again by saying properties and clicking it back to this place normally if you go to health centers you'll see a tree around it uh people for people to sit and rest uh, and 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 that is part and parcel of the um networks okay so we do have a good understanding now of how to use it in a big state zoom into the location you want only that location take out because we do too much in google earth also it will suffocate and, and will drag a lot of your uh, memory and internet uh, speed so make sure you do that uh, google earth pro also needs uh, internet uh, so just make sure you you just use what uh, just truncate your work to what you want okay so good, we have uh, stopped here with the health uh, care centers and stuff. Now we'll go to crops and agriculture uh, fields. In, um, uh, again, we'll do Tamil Nadu or Maharashtra. Maharashtra is too big. So let us uh, go down back to uh, another area. Okay, so Punjab has been uh, using a, um, a lot of Haryana. Punjab has been using a lot of groundwater. Um, and uh, we, need, we can actually see what crops they are growing. Uh, by just extracting that so let's do that uh, we will have um, this one selected yep. okay as usual um, it does uh, let you select one part let's see i'll go to properties and then uh, open attribute table you can select one and select all. Okay, now, now it will allow you to select. Yeah, for some reason it does that. It's fine. So let's say this this uh, part is where the groundwater is typically extracted. We'll do, yeah, we'll do this one. Uh, and then I'm going to extract now on the India full states um, the OSM for crops. So I'm going to first put inject my layer. So I'm going to say layer, India full states, and only the selected layer. So only this layer will come up because I've selected it. Uh, and then now I will uh, say agriculture. I, 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 I like to actually use uh, this data rather than the preset. So let me go back here and say agree. And you'll see in the agricultural key, how many are there? There's designated, non-designated, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we'll just use everything, okay? Uh, agriculture, yes, no, designated, permissive, private, official. Uh, we'll just say yes, so that we'll add it. And then R, and then we can say crops. This is the beauty now. We can actually map the different types of crops. Uh, so if you want to take out the agricultural land or just put poultry, sh chicken feed, uh, chicken uh, farms, etc., you can do. Uh, but I'm just going to say, um, in there we have wheat uh, and and uh, yes wheat we have to map the wheat data uh, and then uh, let's see how much of these are wheat and so, so see how interesting it could be just to make uh, questions out of this okay we can have advanced we can have nodes polylines we can have polygons also um, polygons is good run query no awesome object is selected uh, so okay, we just say nodes and points, polygons. Okay, so always nodes has to be selected. We'll just run this now. Successful query, but no result. So for some reason, uh, the data has not been mapped. And these are the regions where there's tons of uh, data that um, are are um, are needed to be mapped. So if that is the case, uh, if it doesn't go by the area, I'll show you the other way around in and around Punjab. Okay, we do know Punjab has a lot of agriculture and crops, um, and then we can see it now, done the same query again, if we are lucky, we'll find a lot of crop area. Okay, so it says again, which means that not much data has been given for that region, uh, which is fine. Uh, we can uh, use, uh, let me double check this one, uh, and what we'll do now is uh, we will uh, clear this aspect and then uh, we will now we will now go to Tamil Nadu to take crop data so let us uh, first zoom in to this layer and then uh, we can take Tamil Nadu as a selected area 
uh, and then we'll go to a quick OSM. We would like to see what data they have. Uh, and then I'll also, I've done already some crops for Maharashtra. I'll show you how uh, different they are. So this is where we could use this data for cross-checking the uh, data for uh, Maharashtra and uh, Tamil Nadu for ground truthing, et cetera. Uh, so we can say agriculture. Uh, you have crops and agriculture as precepts. You can say crops. Uh, there's no precept for crops. So the best way is to put it here as crop data. And then in this, you can say that what do you want in terms of Tamil Nadu? I know they grow rice a lot, uh, paddy. So there, there is no paddy, uh, there is rice here. And let me add it and say, or you cannot have <coughs> paddy and um, uh, both uh, paddy and rice and banana because it grows in different, different seasons, right? So we can say canvas, uh, layer extent, or we can say Tamil Nadu. Uh, I'm just going to say Tamil Nadu here, just to see if we can have a, a different in uh, aspects. I'm just going to run everything uh, so that if we have polygons also, we will get it. So the query is running now for rice and bananas. Um, uh, we know that, uh, especially in some regions, there's a lot of rice uh, growing there. Uh, and bananas, especially the um, chips that they make, uh, grow there. And a lot of uh, export is being done to other uh, places. Um, and you can see that uh, mostly it is a polygon that has been exported. Beautifully, the data has come up as polygons. Uh, and <clears throat> we will uh, just minimize this and close this and then go back here, uh, remove the selections. And then we just see uh, zoom to layer. And you could see that small, small particles are there, but we will not see it until and unless uh, we zoom in to this part um, in terms of uh, properties. Okay. It is very small. So what we do is um, OSM type is way as a path. So sometimes we do have, oops, We can zoom into a particular region and then see if, uh, for example, this region uh, may or may not have uh, crops uh, into the data set. Uh, but first, let's export this as a, a save feature as PN, PN crops. And then say, OK, save to the file. And then we go here, say open. PN Crops. No, we say we don't want the style for now. Okay, so um, for some, Okay, so you could see that you could select a particular crop out uh, and then uh, keep it um, uh, in, in uh, crops and bananas we have said. Uh, the only issue here is, are the boundaries the same? Uh, we can establish that by uh, first double clicking here and then we'll say borders on the bottom. Um, and uh, yeah, so it is, it is um, you cannot see it that small in GIS. That is why we exported as a shape file. Uh, and then created a link. So let me see, uh, for example, they have a particular crop um, and it says rice. Okay. I can see this and then I'm going to open the properties, make it opaque, style color, go to uh, opacity is 100%. Just going to add 50% so that we can see the land. It's still it's not visible. Uh, style color is 50%. Um, Area color can be 50% also. Yeah, so now you could see that they claim, they claim that all of this is rice, but technically it is coconut and some other things are there. So here's where the data issue happens. Uh, but in some regions, like a big belt of uh, crops, 
uh, like in Maharashtra, the, the sugarcane, etc., we are able to see a good link between the data sets. So first, let's look at this. And maybe it was when the data was taken, it was a rise. Uh, we don't know. So that is what we're going to see here in 2006. Uh, yes. So all of this has been rise. So this is a very, very important finding we have here. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, so rice requires a lot of human time in terms of management, uh, water irrigation, and harvesting. There's a lot of labor that is needed. Um, not always you can have a tractor that can come in because look at the small roads. Uh, it is very, very hard to bring a tractor into these fields uh, for um, changing the landscape and stuff. So what normally happens is, uh, slowly, slowly, like look here, within four years. So I'm, I'm looking at 2006, uh, where everything is the same land. There is no, there is no bifurcations. Um, uh, but then after that, what happens is there is bifurcations in the land, and you have some growing coconuts uh, and other, other things. So coconut does not require that much management like rice. There's no every year tilling. There's no every year fertilizer application um, and intense labor for sowing and stuff. Only one time you would sow uh, for that. So you look at this, they have divided the land now and slowly some part has been done for horticulture. So these are like fruits or vegetables uh, or flowers. Uh, and then you have coconut and then you have other, other aspects. So you, everything is beautifully done here. Uh, and then um, this this is how the power of remote sensing and satellites is uh, with ground sourced data. You can actually map and take the data out for your particular area of interest. So in, in, GI, in QGIS, uh, as I said, you could not see it very, very small uh, because um, the size is very small. But if you go to the attribute table, you did notice that, uh, you know, it is, it is small, but um, the area is there. Okay, so for example, here, the Jerusalem farm, uh, I'm just going to click it, uh, and then uh, we can, uh, when you click it on to this map, and then say zoom to uh, layer, uh, zoom to selection, there you can see the, see the parcel. So the parcel was not visible in the huge frame when Tamil Nadu, entire Tamil Nadu was shown. Uh, so you see, it's very, very small, very, very small, uh, but still there's a lot of um, uh, attributes like this. So the best way to see maybe the coloring also can help. Uh, and then you can see all of them uh, to be uh, zoomed out, right? So yeah, there's a big farm here. Uh, there's a small farm there. Uh, and around Pichi, my area where a lot of rice is grown, we know that there is a lot of rice grown, okay? So I'm just going to close this part, go back to Google Earth, and then show that this is a quick way of assessing. So as I said, if you go back to this village at Ray, uh, on the banks of the Kaveri uh, water uh, allocations, you will see, so these are, these are this is the um, uh, waterway, as I said, a lot of agriculture that happens around it, right? Look, all these are uh, water uh, agricultures uh, and very, very fertile land, uh, rice, uh, plantations, bananas, etc. very, very uh, highly grown. Uh, however, uh, when, when there is less water and because this is basically the Kaveri water release also uh, is, is being shared. Uh, and if this water doesn't come, all these lands are dry. So there's groundwater being explored, explored. And that is one of the reasons why these regions have migrated from uh, rice to coconuts uh, and uh, plantations which are short grown um, and they don't have to uh, put as much as effort and time as rice. Okay, so for, for some reason, we do not have much data here. Uh, and so which is the need of the hour they have to have data. Let's look at another area. So entire Tamil Nadu has been taken. I didn't take just Trichy. Uh, another area for rice is here, uh, right in the city area, it looks like. Again, uh, we can have this properties. Uh, if you can see, style and color, is everything is individual. So we cannot, uh, we have to go every uh, style and then look at it. So we have clicked on this one, right? So we can just go to the properties. Again, just one more, we'll do for time. Uh, we'll just make it 50%. Uh, and then there you can see right in uh, a village area and a seed area, you can have um, a lot of agriculture still happening. If you do the same exercise for Bangalore, you will get a lot more data that is very, very accurate. Why I chose uh, Tamil Nadu uh, is because of my fieldwork experience. I for sure know that some, some areas I can relate from my field experience 
uh, and remote sensing and uh, OSM some data if it makes sense or not so this is being claimed as rice uh, which uh, may and may not be true uh, but then as i said it depends on where uh, which season which time frame they're looking at this is also rice it says again initially maybe it was rice uh, and this this does look like uh, a large piece of land uh, where um, there has been rice cultivation because of the sizes and let's say 20 percent or 9 percent yes so this is is there i can remove this part and then put a time frame on it to, to show you that it has always been under agriculture this is this can be really really a big rice field one thing you can definitely check is if you can check an agricultural university you'll see a lot of these croppings and patterns that they use okay so this is about your crops uh, I would also like to showcase the uh, Maharashtra one that I have truncated. Uh, it's a big data set, so I'll just truncate a part of it uh, and then show for the class um, uh, which, which uh, crops that we could use. Um, but again, as I said, um, it, does, it does rely more on uh, the use of the data in terms of uh, if you want to do cropping for uh, sugarcane, etc. So since we know that sugarcane is a very important uh, subject, uh, let us quickly do one for sugarcane in the uh, Maharashtra region, uh, because that is where, where a lot of water has been consumed. Uh, so we will go back here and uh, go to the India Full States, zoom the layer, and this is where we want. Uh, so we'll try to see if it selects. It does select this time. Sometimes your uh, QGIS does have some uh, issues. Uh, and you can see here your uh, props. Okay, props. And I know for sure the pain plus banana. Not hand or bananas. And I'm just going to say layer extent, um, Maharashtra or Tamla, India full states, only the select features. Uh, and then I'm just going to close this part and then keep all, all of them on, all of them on uh, just for sake of continuity. Um, because the updated version sometimes does not run for uh, specific uh, calls, uh, it does require it. Always, if you do more ways and stuff, what happens is it does neglect some data. So initially when we ran, it did not run the whole thing, but now it has run it. Um, and you see that crops, sugarcane and rice, uh, which we ran uh, are now sugarcane and bananas. If, if, if I can um, adjust this, so it says crop, sugarcane, crop, bananas. In Tamil Nadu, it was crop, rice, sugarcane and bananas. Uh, so now I am going to export this as a save feature as, uh, and then let us put it in the MH, uh, uh, what should okay sugar cane plus banana this is a very interesting find why because i'll show you that normally uh, you do not have again the step is first do it in uh, qgis then go to open file um, and then open the shape file in um, do you want the same file so then just said yes we need the data you can say okay uh, don't need to save it only when you like it, you can save it. Don't need to save all the data sets. And apparently, uh, it is very, very less compared to the number of data sets um, that are there. Okay, so yeah. double click. Okay, very, very less number of monitoring, uh, only two uh, for, a, for a state that runs on sugarcane. Uh, so, which is interesting, but it's good. At least we have. Um, a style and color, let's say we have 50%. Uh, and this is properties. You can see all the properties. Um, yeah, this is sugarcane, it says. So if you go close, okay, this is a sugarcane plot. Uh, and in time frame, we can also see that, yes, it is a lot of sugarcane. Some um, uh, windrows have been created, but a lot of sugarcane. So now this, this plot, this plot, if we use in the LULC classification, uh, we have data from OSM that this is a sugarcane. So I'm going to show you how this could be useful. So if, I go, if I'm going to take this out, and I know that this is sugarcane from a ground truth entity, 
then all the all the pixels and all the colors that I take from here will reflect sugarcane in my supervised classification. So we did supervised classification. We're going to say all these green color uh, and the growing thread. I'm going to show you how the, the leaves change color uh, during the, the sugarcane uh, period. So you can see here, slowly the big, big uh, leaves are, are coming up uh, in terms of um, the sugarcane growth. Yeah. See the rows are being planted and now the sugarcane comes up. Uh, and then within two months, uh, and then another six months, the crops are growing. Along the side also, they will grow the same things, okay? So almost every region will have the same uh, cultivation. Maybe one or two uh, farms will grow uh, slower or later, depending on the budgets they have, but approximately all of them grow the same thing. Yes. So this is how you could take a data set for sugarcane and other things. And then let's see this one. Um, I'm just going to go zoom in. Uh, this is also saying sugarcane. There's no bananas. Uh, so there is a conversion of bananas uh, uh, of the of the area to bananas. And you can say here, okay, all this is sugarcane as per the data set. Uh, and I'm going to zoom in and zoom out to see how they grow. Uh, and now I have a spectral signature from a particular area which says it is growing sugarcane. So all these is sugarcane as per. Well. So with this, uh, I'm going to stop here uh, for the crop part. We'll quickly do, uh, an, uh, again, Tamil Nadu. We'll just clear the selections and then see if Tamil Nadu can be selected uh, again. Or we can say uh, water bodies, right? So we'll do the water bodies in the vector. Quick OSM. Yep. And then say water. Waterway is there. We don't want that. Um, we can say agriculture and then water. So to find this, you, you can have different ways. There's no water uh, amenity. You can say amenity. And then water, water basket, disposal, transfer, water point, watering is there. Um, and then uh, government. There's no water for government. Uh, let's say water, we have facilities, animal watering, drinking water, water park, uh, man-made water towers, water tap, um, and then utilities, uh, shops, water, let's say just water. Okay. Ooh, there's a lot of water. So there is uh, or, 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 or. So now I just click water as a preset. Uh, do I need a river, stream, tidal, a waterfall, dam? Let's do a dam. Uh, in a, a particular uh, waterfall, I don't need spring, I don't need, it depends on where you are. If you're in the Himalayan region, yes, there is a lot of need for uh, 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 that part, fish pass, no, breakwater, pressurized pipeline, water basin, reservoir, reservoir is good, we can keep that, um, covered water park, coastline, riverland, wetland, uh, all these are not important for us for now. Okay, let's keep these two. Uh, and then let's do it for a particular uh, state, um, uh, Pune. Uh, Pune is known for uh, a lot of uh, waterways. I mean, I'm just going to look. Uh, it depends on if the data is there. I know for sure Pune has a lot of dams, uh, but uh, we need to see if uh, the data is there. So, okay, so it has mapped. It has mapped as waterways and reservoirs in Pune. What I'm going to do is, uh, again, we'll export this as a feature. Go here, put it in my folder as Pune Water. Say OK. Go to Google Earth Pro. Open Pune Waterways. Open. You want to apply the same style? You say yes. All the ways are there. OK, fine. When it starts, it is empty. So just see that it goes to the space but it's empty. So don't uh, um, get uh, scared that why it's not showing up. Just click this button and that's it. So you'll have all the waterways. Uh, in Pune Water, there's three bodies only that has been mapped, very, very less that has been mapped, uh, which is a concern also, one, two, and three. So all within the same region. Uh, maybe they didn't mark Pune into it, which is fine. Um, so you can see here that I'm just going to remove this and say that this is the water body, uh, but for some reason they could not map it in terms of that. So there's a small uh, reservoir type of thing on the side. That is what has been mapped, which is good. Uh, and the main water is there, and this has also been mapped. 
So you can see here how a water body can also be mapped and that spectral signature can be used later for uh, making maps on water bodies and access to water bodies, right? So this ha has been also uh, uh, made and you also have this one which says it's a water body. Uh, we can quickly see if it is a water body. Uh, okay, remove the time frame. It is not a water body, but it has been accidentally marked. Maybe they converted the land from a water body to a thing. Let us see in 1985, we don't have data, much data. So 2004, no, it's always been a land. So uh, maybe a land associated with that has been created, which is fine. So here also rivers and streams are there, but I don't expect rivers and streams to be mapped that easily because you need to go through this and do a path. It's not like a road. A road you can go through, drive through, cycle, and then take a point and then put it in OSM. How do you do that for a river? It is not going to be easy. So it's good that we had this exercise of um, picking and choosing data. Sometimes if your query doesn't work, do not get disheartened. Uh, just make sure that you try different combinations that we did. Uh, initially, when we also did, uh, I also wanted to show that uh, it is getting stuck so that how do you come out of it and still get data for a particular region is by using different query systems. Um, and Punjab and Haryana, the prop mapping was not there, uh, but definitely you can use other query sessions for it. Uh, same thing, sugarcane uh, uh, belts in uh, Maharashtra, we can do. But more importantly, uh, leaving the agriculture because we have NDVI, a lot of remote sensing satellite data that we could use. More than that, we were very successful in uh, targeting rural infrastructures such as roads, schools, healthcare. Now, just think other things that can be done uh, for rural things like ration shops um, and how they call it may be different uh, because they will have a different uh, naming scheme. Uh, but uh, just you can you can update your uh, data on it and then say if uh, if the ration system is there. So there is different rationing systems here, but it's all shops, homes, uh, and um, uh, different aspects. Uh, but you can just definitely say government. It all depends on how uh, they store it. Okay? If ration is registered, they will store it as ration, uh, but it's not there. So uh, just keep on searching. Uh, food is there. Food is there. It's not food. Yeah, food is there. And then ration shop is not there. I don't know what in food will what will what are the subclasses will be there. There's only less subclasses. Okay, so food could be a restaurant, food could be a ration shop, uh, pre-processed food, etc. So with this, uh, I think I've given some good indications of how to use this for mapping your infrastructures when there is no data, creating your own database for rural development, which is very very important. Uh, now I will uh, conclude week eleven and look forward to week. 12, which is the last week of this course. Um, as you are, I'm also excited to see how your exam goes. Um, and then uh, in the week 12, we'll show, show a lot of applications, which will make you think on using these remote sensing uh, data for uh, greater lengths. Uh, with this, I would like to conclude here and uh, thank you.